Welcome back to geometry. Uh, we want to continue taking a look at polyhedra and we want to take a look at the activity that is in the text. So we introduced the regular polyhedra. These are then, right? There's five of them. One, two, three, four, five polyhedra. Let's see, three of them. The tetrahedron, icosahedron, and octahedron all have uh, faces that are triangles. The decahedron, pentagon, cube, square. All right, all the faces are identical. If you were to take it, uh, take one of these objects, pick it up, look at one side, turn it to some other side and look at it, you wouldn't be able to tell that you had turned it, okay, because it all looks the same. So for this activity, what we want to do is we want to count uh, the number of vertices, edges, and faces. So I'll give a, I'll try to give a demonstration here. So I've got with me, I've got with me this guy right here. This is an octahedron. So you might be able to see that in the little corner there, octahedron. You notice that if you look at it from uh, from up here, you can see four faces. If you flip it over and look from the bottom, again, there are four faces, which are not the ones that you were looking at before. So for the octahedron, we know that there are four, or I'm sorry, not four, but four from each uh, angle there, um, for a total of eight faces. Now if I scroll back up, I can identify that we certainly have a vertex here, a vertex here, vertex, 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 and then that gets me all of them except for the one that's right here. these edges. So right here, there's also a vertex. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. And then for the number of edges, well, we've conveniently filled this in as well. Uh, we're going to actually have some, some die in class, some dice in class that uh, that will be able to uh, hold, manipulate, and, and try to count these things. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, that all go up to this vertex. One, two, three, four, that go down to the, this vertex. And then one, two, three, four, that make this uh, square going around the outside. Okay, so that's four plus four plus four is 12. 12 edges. Excellent. So that's how we would fill it in for the regular polyhedra. Again, I'll bring in, I have several of these of these die. Here's the uh, dodecahedron. Uh, of course, a cube is just a regular die. And let's see, we have the icosahedron as well. Okay, so what we can take a look at these. Oh, and then, and then of course, yes, a, a tetrahedron. So uh, we can fill in this portion of the activity in class. So this we can fill out in class. If you are uncomfortable trying to, right, if, you, if you can't quite uh, see what's going on with the images on the previous page, uh, we can fill this out in class with the dice. Excellent. For these, uh, let's see here, triangular prism, square prism, pentagonal prism, and hexagonal prism. We actually have uh, a few of these already drawn up, and these are a little bit easier to see. So for the prisms, we have three of them. Uh, let's see, this one is a trapezoid, this one is hexagonal, and this one's triangular. So we have hexagonal triangular. Is that what, is that what was down here? triangular, 
hexagonal. So we can do a, a square prism, that one shouldn't be too bad. And then a pentagonal prism, um, let's see, we don't have that one set up. So, but with the prisms, again, remember that you could quite easily sketch these. So for a triangular prism, you would have a triangular top, a triangular bottom, so two bases, and then the vertices of the triangles would be connected. So you can use that to help you. Okay, so maybe maybe you like to see it in a way that um, maybe something a little bit easier. So we have this. Now it looks like a solid, and then we add dashed lines for the edges that we can't see. So that can uh, that could help you out a little bit. So that would be a triangular prism. And then we can do similarly for the pyramids. So if we wanted a square pyramid, right, we would have a square base. Then we can't see what's back here. We have the apex, and then we have the edges going down here. And it looks like maybe I want to do this a little bit differently. So let's say that we have a square base that looks like this. There we go. Oh, no, that's not going to work either. I don't want it there. I want it. Let's go a little bit higher. That should work. And, uh, but I should have made some of these lines dashed. But I think this gives us the good a good idea. So we can draw this sort of a thing for the pyramids. So I trust that you guys can uh, can draw these and fill them in. And if you can't, that's what class is for, right? Come in and, and ask and uh, we can draw these together and we can count these up together if, if necessary. So feel free to stop by in class and we can talk about these things. But once you've done that, once you have uh, drawn these and come up with uh, filling in, filling in this table, you have two questions to answer. For the prisms, a prism with n sides, we should be able to find a pattern that tells us when there are n sides, we can determine how many vertices, edges, and faces there are whenever the base has n sides. So we can write V in terms of N, E in terms of N, and F in terms of N, when there are N sides on the base. And then the same question can be asked when we have a pyramid. So if we have a pyramid, how many vertices, edges, and faces do we have when the base has N sides? Okay. And then uh, let's see here. This is a very important name in mathematics. Leonard Euler, right? This is not Euler. No, it is Euler. Okay, here. Euler. So, Swiss mathematician, mathematician uh, from the 1700s, arguably the greatest mathematician of all time. Sure, I won't argue against it anyway. Uh, but you should be able to find, I'll start this out for us, so Euler's formula, if V, E, and F are the number of vertices, edges, and faces for a polyhedron, then V minus E plus F is equal to what? I'll let you fill in that blank. Uh, uh, I would encourage you to try and fill in that blank before watching the next video because in the next video uh, we're going to fill in at least that blank. So give that a shot and see what you guys can do. If we need to talk about this in class, that's absolutely fine. Uh, that would be great. So uh, have a good day. I will see you guys very shortly.